Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're going to talk about an important trace mineral called zinc. So let's get right into some of the benefits, the dosages, and what you can utilize in food to increase your zinc levels. So zinc is an essential micronutrient. What that means is that you need to take in zinc on a daily basis to be utilized. It's not very uh, readily stored in our body, okay? It binds to approximately 2,800 human proteins for the catabolic, structural, and regulatory functions. What that means is that it's involved in the process of breaking down proteins, building proteins, um, signaling, and enzymatic function of our body. So zinc is a very important micronutrient in terms of overall health and function. It's used as a signaling molecule, so it's involved in uh, sending signals throughout our body. And then uh, structurally, it plays a role in 10% of all uh, human proteins or mammalian proteins. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral. So the benefits is broad and wide. So if it's an antioxidant, it blunts the oxidative stress, whether it's hormonal, chemical, uh, mental, physical, whatever stresses there are, it's an antioxidant. It also is a anti-inflammatory, so it reduces inflammatory load. Another thing it does is it modulates your immune system to help fight viruses. So if you took zinc early on a let's say a viral infection so the first sign of a sniffle cough or sore throat you took like a zinc lozenge you can ward off uh, some of the signs and symptoms of a virus and also you can shorten the duration of the viral infection so it's very important to take also it's important for growth so as a child you're growing or you have rapid growth if you're pregnant, right, and you have a, a baby, then you want to be able to take or supplement with some zinc. Now, it's also important for the health of connective tissue, hair, nails, skin, uh, ligaments, etc. So zinc is very important for that. It's also great for acne, important for brain function and immune function. And we just spoke about the immune function because it enhances lymphocytes enhances neutrophils and macrophages. So it really does help the immune system fight off your viral infections. Now, overt low zinc is not common, meaning like severe zinc deficiency is really not common because of the food uh, sources. But zinc may be low with things like autoimmune disease, right, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis or rheumatoid arthritis, cardiovascular disease, as well as uh, neurodegenerative processes, prostatitis, right, inflammation of the prostate, and polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, where you have uh, problems with sugar management, as well as testosterone levels. Now, if you exercise aggressively, you're a triathlete, or you run a lot, and you have a lot of oxidative stress, you can burn off your zinc, so you need to probably supplement if you have a lot of uh, aggressive exercises. Vegetarian diets, because zinc is found in things that have animal products, right? So uh, vegetarian diets can be um, somewhat restrictive in zinc content, as well as people who are on hypertensive medications. So certain hypertensive medications tend to deplete zinc. So let's go into the different forms of zinc. And how do we get it? So in food, uh, probably the highest level of zinc is in oysters. So you have oysters, crabs, lobster, red meat, poultry, nuts, uh, seeds. They all have zinc in it, right? Um, there are things like fortified cereal and, and milk products that also have zinc. But in my clinical practice, where we have a lot of autoimmune disease and food sensitivity, we tend to sway away from um, milk-based products as well as wheat-based products 
uh, in our diet. So these are some of the foods. Obviously, there are more. So adverse effects of taking too much zinc. When I say too much, we're talking about significant amounts, 150 to 200 milligrams of zinc daily, right? So you can have a bad taste or loss of taste, nausea, vomiting, bowel changes uh, can also occur. So taking excess of zinc can create some problems, right? Even the nasal sprays that have zinc in it can create issues with smell, so you've got to be cautious with that. So different forms of zinc. You have zinc bisglycinate, which is 31% elemental zinc, and is 43% more bioavailable than the zinc gluconate form. Zinc acetate is 30% elemental zinc, and 43% more bioavailable than the zinc oxide. Zinc citrate is 34% elemental zinc, but equal to gluconate form in bioavailability. So even though it has a high elemental count or high elemental percentage, in actuality, it's not as uh, bioavailable, let's say, as zinc bisglycinate because it's the same as gluconate. Zinc picolinate is 21% elemental zinc. It's better absorbed than gluconate and citrate. However, some studies have shown that uh, it really doesn't increase serum zinc levels significantly. So zinc picolinate um, may not be used. Zinc carnosine is 23% uh, elemental zinc and it's been shown to improve gastritis and stomach issues. So some patients who have issues with their GI tract, we may use zinc carnosine. At the end of the day, um, if you supplement with some sort of zinc, it can be beneficial for our health, right? So if you have sinus issues and throat issues uh, of that initial viral infection, sometimes zinc lozenges will work better. If you want to get lower in the GI tract, you want to use a pill form. So it get, uh, infects our immune system, our gut, etc., or more systemically. Now, best time to take zinc is on an empty stomach, right? And you take between 15 to 30 milligrams of zinc, right? So here's the deal. Zinc is not readily absorbable in large doses. So let's say you take 15 milligrams of zinc maybe half of that will be absorbed at the time you ingest it or within a certain period of time, right? So taking large doses of zinc really is not that beneficial because it's not readily absorbed. So about half, right, would be absorbed. Let's say if you took 15 milligrams, maybe seven to 11 milligrams might be absorbed, right? So if we take 30 milligrams, you probably want to take it in divided doses because it can get absorbed a little bit better. But essentially, you don't really need a huge amount of zinc. So the dosages I recommend here is between 15 and 30 milligrams. And if you're taking 30 milligrams, I would suggest you divide them uh, in terms of their dosage uh, throughout the day. Um, if you look at overall zinc function, right, it has so many different functions and is, is a essential trace mineral that you need to take in on a daily basis. It's important that you take uh, not too much because uh, it can have some adverse effects, um, but you will have to take it on a daily basis. Now, they're zinc rich foods, so you don't have to go ahead and, and supplement all the time. Um, but if you do supplement, make sure you don't take too much because it has some adverse side effects. And also excessive zinc can also deplete copper or uh, inhibit copper. So you have to be very careful not to take too much. There are some formulations that have uh, zinc along with copper in the correct ratio. I believe it's like 15 to one. So you wanna be sure that you're not depleting copper by taking too much zinc at uh, any one time. So if you look at the benefits and look at the forms, it can be quite beneficial, especially in the flu season, because it's helpful for lung function and pneumonia, et cetera. Today, we're gonna to talk about natural zinc ionophores. So what is an ionophore and why do we need to have 
a support for zinc transport. So let's get right into it. Natural zinc ionophores. Zinc is an essential micronutrient or trace mineral. Binds to approximately 2,800 human proteins for catabolic processes, structural growth, as well as metabolic processes or regulatory function. So what are some of the properties of zinc? Antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral. And for today's lecture, we're talking about the purposes of how it will affect antiviral properties. Foods, oysters, crabs, lobsters, red meat, poultry, and nuts. Consideration, if you're taking a lot of zinc, especially over 30, 50 you know, uh, milligrams, you want to consider using copper. The proper ratio can be anywhere from 15 to 1. Some studies say 25 to 1. So you'll need to supplement a little bit of copper if you're taking a lot of zinc. Okay? Zinc needs help in transporting through the cell membrane. So that's what a zinc ionophore does. It helps the transport of zinc into or bypass the cell membrane so it can do its job once it gets into the cells. So what are some natural zinc ionophores? Now there's a lot of information out there uh, on this and there's a lot of other doctors talking about this, but I wanted to put it in one place for you. Quercetin is a zinc ionophore. EGCG or epigallocatechin gallate, curcumin. Those are the three major ones. There are others, okay? So in terms of dosages, if we're doing a preventative uh, measure, especially during the winter months where people are more susceptible for flu, colds, etc., you can use zinc 15 to 30 milligrams twice a day on an empty stomach. You can use quercetin 500 milligrams twice a day on empty stomach. Now there are quercetins that are what we call phytosomes and those you can take with meals. EGCG is 100 to 200 milligrams per day with meals. Curcumin is 500 milligrams once a day with meals. Okay, so that's more of a preventative measure that you can utilize during the winter months. At the first sign of a cold or a flu symptom, what you want to do is double the dosage. So what I just recommended as a preventative dosage, dose, uh, dosage, you want to go ahead and double it at the first signs and symptoms. Okay. Now other considerations, vitamin D plus K2 and magnesium, vitamin C, elderberry, echinacea, and astragalus. Now, these are a lot of different supplements and we don't want to overwhelm our body with too many supplements and being so regimented. So what I would just recommend is maybe a preventative measure, okay? And at the first sign, just double the dosage, okay? So there are also, you know, people are taking, you know, multivitamins and all these supplements and it, it just becomes overwhelming for a lot of patients. So this is just some simple strategies uh, to help prevent colds and flus over the winter. Basically what zinc does is it helps prevent replication of these viruses. So we need to get zinc through the cell so it can do its job within the cell. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.